Hello, my name is Gregory Sue, and I'm currently junior in computer science at the University of Michigan. I'm a member of the Engineering Honors Program, and for the last semester I've been working with, working with TechLab at City for a project for main mobility. The project I've been working on with the CFE, Tech Lab, and May Mobility has been, has been for my Engineering Honors capstone. I wish to give special thanks at the beginning to my project advisor, Nick Moraz, as well as my, my contacts at May Mobility, Eric Savage and Lair Vaughn. Additionally, this was a team project along with K Betty Wan, also of Engineering Honors, Jason Magar, and Rena, Rena Duncani. My Tech Lab lecturers for Tech Lab at City are Eric Winf Winfield and Doug Moore. Without your help and especially the help of my team members, it, this project would not be possible because I am frankly a very a pretty good software person, but not so good at hardware, which Benny Wan specializes in. May Mobility is an autonomous shuttle company operating out of Ann Arbor. They are a startup currently re running routes in Providence, Rhode Island, as well as a private route for Bedrock in Detroit. May Mobility's problem is that vehicles are very dangerous, and autonomous shuttles need to be very carefully tested to make sure that they are safe on the road. While they have a very thorough test suite, Many other tests involve measurements such as acceleration that are difficult to be certain. As such, they requested that our group create a, a specifically spec sensor, te sensor test suite that would read acceleration in, in the support vehicle, the distance to the autonomous vehicle from the support vehicle, and then log, log that data and send it to an external source wirelessly. Our solution to this problem was to create a network transmitter that reports acceleration and distance over a wireless broadcast, which I confirmed with Wireshark. Additionally, this, is, this transmission begins as soon as you boot up the transmitter, which is very helpful for testing. As you can see, I'm booting into the device, and as soon as it boots, it begins reading out data in Wireshark, because it is broadcasting over the network. It is currently running in root, so to re reveal how to kill it, I need to run ps-ef, and then proceed to type in the PID. Over in Wireshark, you can see that it stops receiving messages from the transmitter, which is its own wireless access point and you can see over in the terminal that it died. If you take a look at the log that I recorded, which is the largest number because it is a name based off of the current time, you will see that the CSV file that it was written records seconds since epic, range that the LiDAR is reading, and the current acceleration. And the current acceleration is 255 because that is a raw 8-bit value, minus 1, which means it's written reading a very small negative acceleration, which is within noise constraints. And then if you look over in Wireshark, which is a packet capture net system, it is continuing to read off of the network that the Raspberry Pi is acting as a wireless access point for, which is because it is the primary broadcaster on that network, and I didn't want to worry about having to find its correct device from the wireless network on the other end. And as you can see, it's reading LEN 5 and 3 messages out of, from the from the Raspberry Pi, LEN 5 for the acceleration in three axes, and LEN 3 for the range. As you can see, the system was working very well. When engineering, it's very important that you choose your sensors and hardware correctly. We chose a sensor, Preston Sensor Suite Containment that Betty Wan created, see her presentation for further details, an I2C 3-axis accelerometer, a LiDAR-based range finder, and a Raspberry Pi 3 for the central processor. To connect all these sensors, the electrical design was very important. I happen to be the primary electrical engineer on the team as a result of my experience. And so what I created was I2C wiring for, from the accelerometer and the LiDAR to the Raspberry Pi because they're both I2C based sensors. The LiDAR had to be external to the container, which meant I had to include a variable length wire to allow it to be po posted at an un unknown length. I chose an RJ14 cable, which is basically a telephone wire. And then I used breadboard cables to connect to the breakout pins on the Raspberry Pi. Because the electrical system worked so well, I was able to move on to the software. The software that I wrote was largely Python-based, a main function running an accelerometer driver and a UDP broadcaster, and then a C library wrapper around a C++ library provided by Garmin under the Apache 2.0 license for their LiDAR. The Raspberry Pi acts as a wireless access point for a wireless receiver such as an Android phone to connect to, and this turned out to be a very important part of the project because UDP turned out to be somewhat difficult. In fact, it's a very important skill that I had to use in this project. I, I, I used UDP networking, Python coding clearly. I learned how to use a C library as an extension to Python using the C types module. I also learned about ITC communication. I exercised my built skills electrical system design, which I described earlier. And I utilized, utilized and practiced my inter-team communication with, with the mechanical engineers, as well as my problem-solving skills when I realized that I had a problem. There were a few of them, which I will describe later. And turn and while it certainly took was certainly much effort, it was ultimately highly highly successful. 
in the moving on into the future, there are, I did have some unexpected results that weren't quite done. Originally, the specs were supposed to include position and velocity of the sport vehicle, which are going to be obtained by GPS. Unfortunately, when the current COVID-19 pandemic shut down the entire country, I didn't actually have the GPS with me, so I couldn't test and write code for it, because that was with one of our mechanical engineers who was developing a container for it. And then also I had to use Wireshark to confirm the data and the broadcasting, as you saw in the video earlier, because the Android app is frankly in a non-deliverable state. You can see an image of a proof of concept I wrote, but the UDP communication on that end was not ready at the was not ready at the time of this presentation. Moving on, Tech Lab is actually a year-long class. So I will I will be continuing on either on as I said for this project or on a new project next semester. And then I will also be, sometime in the near future, implementing the GPS code for our advisors to test, as well as the AppSide UDP networking in Android Studio, because hopefully that would actually confirm the specs. Our advisors is also being very helpful in testing and validating the Sensor Suite for us. I recently get, passed it off to him, and hopefully that will all be very successful. Now, of course, for the, those of you in engineering honors, you, you have some very interesting questions for me. Among them, how to become involved in this project? I have lately developed a, very, a significant interest in robotics. This actually started my freshman year when I joined UM Autonomy, the University of Michigan's autonomous, autonomous boat team. I got a lot of robotics experience there, and one of the, one of the members in that team, Rourke Petulo, referred me into taking Tech Lab at M City, where I was selected to work with my mobility. This was a very interesting project because it also utilized both my electrical and my low-level coding skills that I picked up an electrical team, and it turned out to be very useful for me. So what I what I found through this project is that my somewhat idiosyncratic both hardware and software experience turned out to be very useful for this project, which is how I became involved with it. There are a number of hurdles in this project. The COVID-19 pandemic was obviously a hurdle for many people. My project was, not, was certainly included. When it happened, we had hardware with multiple different people, which meant I wasn't actually able to test everything or write code for everything, like the GPS I mentioned earlier. Also, in-person meetings were very helpful for pair programming, and my partner sometimes had some ish troubles writing code on her end without my help, which made it much more difficult to communicate without being able to meet in person, which also made software collaboration more difficult. I also found that discovered that integrating the LiDAR library was much harder than I expected it to be, because I thought that C++ integrated really easily with Python. It turns out that's not the case. It is C that integrates somewhat easily, and even then you need shared libraries, which, I did, which I'd never learned about before. And UDP networking took a little longer than I expected, partially because while I knew the basics of it, I had never actually written full code for it before. So while I understood the concept, I had not, I had not implemented it, and that took longer than I expected. In hindsight, there are certainly some alternative solutions I could have used. I could have written the main functions in C++ instead of Python, probably would have improved rate, or a alter as well as making everything a single language instead of need having multiple languages in one code base. Alternatively, I could have also re-implemented the LiDAR driver in Python based off the C++ library instead of the wrapper that I wrote in C instead. Also, we would have been more careful choosing our sensors because there's an early time delay because the first accelerometer we chose is actually surface mount, which I am on, which I do not know how to use. And I, with that in mind, I also might have used a circuit board mount just because it would have made it easier to store and re reconnect all sensors when you had to take them apart. In conclusion, I learned much about networking and sensor drivers, created a very useful sensing te testing sensor suite for main mobility, even if it is not quite complete and there continues to be work to be done. And I had a very successful project output, even if it was reduced by, by a pandemic. I hope you have a good day. And to the, all, all the other engineering students out there, I hope you find projects just that interest you as much as this one interested me. Goodbye.